Hello, good evening, and I'm so excited to be with you this evening in the second series of the training organized by Youth Enlightenment Forum. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Nexmi Mathias, the CEO of Next Love Web Solutions based in Numa, Adamawa State. Now, the topic given to me today to treat is business plan writing. Business plan writing. So, what is the business plan? The business plan is a statement of goals or statement of business goals, why they are achievable, and the plans of reaching those business goals. You can also say the uh, business plan is a guide that a person writes on how to take his business from an idea stage to fulfillment. Yesterday we were giving a class on our teaching on business ideas generation, how you can come up with business idea and today we want to look at how you can put those ideas on paper so that you can follow through to achieve your business goals. Now, other importance of business plan writing is that you can use it to get business loans from banks. You can also get grants from government or other private organizations that give grants. So, I want to look into that. Now, there are some points I want us to cover in this class. The business plan should have a cover page as the first thing. You should have also have an executive summary. You should have an introduction. You should have the product and services you are offering. You should have industry and market analysis. You should have competition where competitors should put it there. SWOT analysis. Operation plan, marketing plan, management, financial plan, and then appendices. These are the things we are going to cover in this class today. And we are going to continue in audio so we can go through all of these together. And at the end of it all, you have the opportunity to ask your questions so that I will take them one after the other. Okay, let's go through these components one after the other. First thing you want to see there is the cover page. Now your cover page contains your basic information about yourself and your business. So you put your business name, your name, probably your company logo if you have it, then your motto or slogan, then your contact information, your email address, phone number, website address if you do have. And then uh, what you can also put there is the name of the organization you're submitting the business plan to. Is it a bank, an organization that gives grants included there? Basically, that's what your cover page will contain. The next, we go to the executive summary. This is the summary or snapshot of all the contents of the plan. It should be written in a way that everyone reading it will have seen the core essence of your business plan by just reading the executive summary. So it summarizes everything from your introduction to your milestone in your business plan. That's the executive summary. So basically you write the executive summary at the end of your business plan. Even though it comes in front but it's after you've written every component of your business plan that you now come back to write your executive summary. And because that's the first thing people read, it should be something that will catch the attention of the investor or the person that's written your business plan. If you fumble there, there's every tendency that your business plan is going to get into the trash. So make sure you write something that will catch the attention of the person reading your business plan 
So after the executive summary, you go to the introduction. Introduction, you have the overview, which you give the description of the business and the stage where the business is at at the moment. Is there the research and development stage? Is there the market entry stage? Or is there the growth stage? You have to give an overview of your business and indicate what stage the business is at the moment. Describe the current operations and also state the progress so far you've made and what has spurred you into taking the next steps for which you are writing this business plan for. That's what you give in the overview. Then you talk about a vision statement. And a vision statement is a statement of what you want your company to become eventually, such as one of the top 10 in your industry, maybe one of the top five in your industry, or maybe the most preferred brand for your service. And then you need to state the time frame of attaining this vision. And this vision must be inspiring to drive you to higher and higher performance in your business. The next thing after vision statement is your mission statement. And this talks about the purpose for which the business is set up and is trying to achieve. What's the purpose for your business? What's the reason for its existence? That indicates the problem the company's product will solve and the market is trying to serve. You have to indicate it there in your mission statement. Then if you talk about your objectives, what are the objectives? Of this business and the objectives we're we'll talking about what you want to achieve with the business itself over a period of time now this could be establishing a product or service in the market it could be to increase your market share in the market or to grow the business to a specific size increase the prof profitability a certain level it could be a preferred brand these are objectives you have to indicate it there what are those things that you're trying to achieve with your business itself now in stating out your objectives you should make sure that they are smart and this smart s m a r t where s stands for specific to target a specific area for improvement or initiation. It should be what? It should be measurable. You should be able to measure quantity or at least suggest an indicator of progress. If you don't know a, the particular place you're going to, even when you get there, you will know you've got into your destination. So you should be able to measure the success of your business through these objectives that you put out in your business plan your business plan should be attainable that's the a there specify who will do it it also has to be realistic state what results can realistically be achieved given the available resources don't buy more than you can chew what are the available resources you have can you achieve those things you want to? You have stated out in your objectives with the available resources you have. Be realistic. Time bound. You should specify when you want to achieve those results. It's very important. So your business objectives should be smart. Then the next thing in the introduction you talk about is your value proposition value proposition and this can be said to be the promise of value to be delivered and acknowledged what is it that you are trying to give the market what expectation of what benefits will the market get from you from your business it could be maybe there's something that they are getting now but you want to give them at a reduced time that's reduction in time you want to give them as at a reduced cost 
or at a higher quality or maybe you have to uh, you want to give them at a more efficient uh, yeah, more efficient service understand these are what what you put in your value proposition so that's it about the introduction the next component of the business plan I want to talk about is the product and or service. Describe the product or service you are offering or you want to offer to deliver the value proposition you've given them up above. So you can include illustrations if necessary. Talk about your product, talk about your services. Describe it as efficient as you can, as simple, straightforward as you can to the investor or for yourself. Because you will be the one to follow your business plan. You understand? So you have to describe your product and your service. The next component in your business plan is the industry and market analysis. State the industry or the sector of the economy you are targeting. Is it the health sector? Is it the agricultural sector? Is it construction? Is it manufacturing? State what sector in which your business is playing. Then state the key features or peculiarities of the industry that make it viable or demonstrate growth potential. What is it in that industry that demonstrate good potential what is the demonstrate viability in that business included there state the actions of the government that support the growth of the industry is there any government policy that is going to support the growth of that industry you're into stated there like now uh, before this pandemic came up we were sure of i mean aware of the government policy on the importation of foreign rice and that had boosted the agricultural sector so anybody going to rice production can quote what's happening on the ban for the importation of rice and put it there so what actions of the government support the growth of your industry make sure you put it there now what market do you want to serve or do you intend to serve? Put it in your market and industry analysis. What? Oh, okay. Next thing, you should state the major players in the industry. State also the size of the market. What's the volume and value of the market? Indicated there in your industry and market analysis. State the segment of the market that you are targeting the different customer groups now a lot of people if you ask them who are your customers they say everybody no, everybody cannot be your customer you should be able to state in your business plan what segment of the market you are targeting i would call market segmentation state the specific group your product or service is meant for i've already said that state the potentials for growth in the market so the bankers or the people that want to give you a grant want to know is there any potential for growth in this market you should be able to state it and being very fast i don't know if you are following but just put down your questions at the end of it all you'll be able to answer those questions Next thing is competition. State your major competitors, either direct or indirect competitors. She mentioned them. I meet a lot of people who find it as a thing of pride to say, oh no, what I'm doing, there's no competitor. And they think uh, they are over the world. No, you should be able to point out that you have competitors can't say you don't have competitors you have either direct or indirect competitors you do have them describe 
their products and their services. State their competitive advantages and disadvantages. Don't try to show that uh, your own is better than everybody's own. Your competitors have something that are advantages and disadvantages. So show their positive side and their negative sides. Very important. The customer segments they are focusing on, mention it there. Then state the probability of new entrants in that industry. Then you should state the potential or new competitor in the market. While the potential new competitors are coming to the market, you should be able to state it. Then under that competition also, you should state the barriers to entry to the market. Is it very easy for anybody to just get up and enter the market? You should be able to state it there. Is it difficult? State it there. This is what we call barriers to market entry. Then state if the cost is high or low for a customer to switch to competitors. Mention it there. Then state how you can make or achieve customer loyalty making sure your customers will always prefer your product or services. You should also state that in your competition. Now, in just a moment, we'll be going into SWOT analysis. That's strength, weakness, opportunity, threats. SWOT analysis. I'll be with you in a moment. <music> 